Welcome to our Firebird DB Admin Training, covering the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. In this session, we'd like to take a look at installing the Firebird server. There are two ways of installing Firebird, using the installer or from a zip file. Firebird is renowned for its ease of installation and administration. Even an inexperienced user can download and install Firebird using the installer with just a few mouse clicks. If you are totally new to Firebird, please first watch our third tutorial in this DB Admin series, Server Versions and Differences, to help you decide which Firebird version you need. If you've already used the installer, you'll know that you simply need to press enter six or seven times to install Firebird. The installation process is the same regardless of the version number. You can see that this installation is user controlled and the user needs very little Firebird knowledge to install it. Unless you have a good reason for not doing so, we strongly recommend always using the most recent version of Firebird. Okay, this is a problem you might eventually encounter, that a Firebird server is already running on the machine. You can see that I have multiple Firebird installations. When using the installer, it's important that there are no other Firebird servers running on the same computer. Multiple installations of Firebird are possible. You'll see here that Firebird really is free of charge, even when used commercially. Settings and options. Classic server, super server. I'll talk a little more about these options, the differences and when one is better than the other in the next tutorial. As long as you're not sure that the classic server is the better option, select the super server. The Firebird Guardian is a monitoring utility that does nothing other than check whether the Firebird server is running or not. Nowadays, it's not really necessary on modern Windows systems as it's possible to restart the Firebird service should it cease to run for any reason, using the operating system. Use the Windows Services Restore page to specify that every time the Firebird service stops, it should be restarted. When the service is halted, the restart can be viewed in the Windows Event Log. However, if the server does go down, it's important to find out what caused it. The logs need checking to trace page corruption, and an immediate decision needs to be made right there and then whether to regress backwards or move forwards. An automatic restart can lead to more crashes and more corruption until the problem is noticed and the cause is analyzed and repaired. So consider carefully whether you wish to automatically restart your server should it crash. Standard options, you can decide whether you wish to install the Guardian. You can start the server as an application or as a service. There are often problems in company networks where you don't have the necessary permissions or rights to install services, so ensure you have the necessary permissions first. Let's take a look at the individual parameters. Start Firebird automatically every time you boot up. This should be active. Install Control Panel Applet. Caution here for Windows Vista. If you are installing onto a Windows Vista machine, the installer option to install the control panel applet must be disabled to avoid having it break the control panel on your Vista system. Copy Firebird client library to system directory. Care needs to be taken here if there is more than one instance of Firebird running on the server. If the FB client DLL is simply overwritten, it can cause problems for any Firebird server that is already installed and running. Instead of copying to the system directory, simply move it to your application directory. Generate client library as GDS32 DLL for legacy app support. Many programs, including for example older Delphi versions, rely on a direct access using this file name. This option can be checked to copy the file under the old name. So, that was it. For some people, that may seem disappointing. First, they get a file that isn't even 4.5 MB and which includes two separate Firebird servers, the classic server and the super server. And then all you need to do is press enter five or six times and that's supposed to be a fully fledged server. This means you have fewer sources for potential errors. 
Since Fiber 2.1, the installer offers the option to install multiple instances. You can install a named instance. Installing multiple instances of Firebird is demonstrated in our first IP Expert tutorial, Firebird Installations for Professionals. Another way to install Firebird is from a zip file. The zip kit is for manual, custom installs of Classic or Super Server. This zip file basically contains the complete installation structure. This method is more flexible for embedded installations and is the ideal solution for development applications which are being passed on to customers. Simply pack the complete Firebird zip directory in with your application so that when you call your installer, the only work necessary is to call the appropriate batch file. Download the appropriate zip file from the Firebird download site following the directions at the beginning of this tutorial. It includes a pretty much pre-installed server, which you can simply copy to any directory as wished, and which you can integrate into your installation by calling batch files in the bin directory. Simply start the install classic bat or install super bat, depending upon which server you wish to install. Install super for the super server or install classic for the classic server. And that's all you need to do. The instreg utility does all the work, making the necessary entries in the right places and installs everything required in the registration. It usually installs the Firebird Guardian 2 and concludes by running inst svc, which starts the service. So, if you want to install your software application for an end user, then you simply pack this complete Firebird zip directory in your installation, start your installer, and the only thing you need to do is call this batch file. This simplifies customer installation considerably. You also have the option, when you include the zip file in your installation, to say, for example, in command line mode, FB server minus A. The FB server is started down here where the symbol is shown and the server is already running. I haven't installed this complete path. It's not necessary. If you want to deliver a Firebird server with certain users already defined, you'll need to include the Security2 FDB or Security FDB in older versions, with the users defined as you need them to be. This offers more flexibility than if you define these in the official setup where you simply include a predefined Security FDB whether you need it or not. There are certain parameters in the Firebird conf file which you can set, for example the name of my service, on which TCP IP port Firebird is installed. The standard port is 3050. If you alter any of these parameters, you need to remove the comment characters. Then you can install your Firebird server parallel to other existing Firebird or Interbase servers without causing any problems as they view each other as separate identities and programs. The Firebird conf parameters will be described in detail in a later tutorial. It's very practical, as if you include this revised configuration file in your software package, you can install your Firebird server directly on another port, ensuring that even if a Firebird server is already installed on the same machine, you do not need to worry about it, as long as it's not installed on the same altered port, of course. So, that was our introduction to installing the Firebird server. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IP Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next tutorial in our series for DB admins. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.